Hi guys, I'm going to walk you through the process of manually updating the firmware on your Bridge 6 or Bridge 4. So without the app being released yet, we'll have to do this using a third party application. Uh, if you're on Windows, we'll do this using the STM32 Cube Programmer application. Um, STM is the manufacturer of the microcontrollers we use, so fortunately they have an app which will allow us to update the firmware via USB without uh, the Pirate MIDI app. So to do this, jump on the main site or follow a link if you've got one, go to support and it will take you to our learn.pirate.midi site. Head over to the download section and you'll see we've got a firmware release announcement here and there's written instructions here uh, showing some of the new features that we introduced, a uh, change regarding the hold time and then also some bug fixes. Then there's step-by-step -step instructions here so be sure to follow along with those as well as the video. We'll minimize that and what you want to do is go to either the Bridge 6 or the Bridge 4 link depending on your device. I'll be using Bridge 6. So we'll click on this and it will take you to a Google Drive folder. Now for Windows you want to download the Win64 application file here. So you can just click download. It'll bring up a warning because it's a zip file. Just click download anyway. And you'll also want to download the firmware file here, bridge6 underscore v1.0.1.1 bin. Download that. Okay. So now you've got that downloaded, you need to connect a TS or TRS cable, just a standard guitar cable is fine, from FlexiPort 1 to FlexiPort 2. Then connect your bridge to your computer, ideally not using a USB hub. And it's best practice to disconnect any other USB devices that aren't necessary, but it shouldn't be an issue. Now on your bridge device, go ahead and enter the menu and go to settings, sorry, system. Then scroll across until you see manual update. Press set. Are you sure? Yes. You'll see your screen flash and then it should go blank. It may go blank or stay on the entering bootloader screen. Either is fine. Now go ahead and once you've installed it, open your STM32 Cube Programmer app. You can open this before putting your bridge into the bootloader mode. Uh, either doesn't matter. But if you do that, uh, under USB configuration here, it, will, it might say no connection. So once you've put your device into bootloader mode, just hit that reset button and it will come up there, USB with the number. Now what we need to do is open the firmware file. So click open file and navigate to where it's been downloaded and click open. Making sure that bridge 6 if you're using a bridge 6 or bridge 4 if you're using a bridge 4. Okay. Once that's done, click on download. And you'll see erasing sector and then download in progress. And once this progress bar has been completed, your device has been successfully updated to the newest firmware. File download complete. Now we can go ahead and close the STM32 Cube program application. And the device now has the latest firmware. What we need to do is power it on or off. Sorry, well, off and then on again. So disconnect the TS TRS cable. Remove power and plug power back in. Now, coming from the previous firmware version, we've added some extra um, data and menu configuration settings. So your device will likely boot up with a strange screen. Some of the labels will be a bit garbled and it won't make much sense. But this is okay the menu will still work. So what you need to do is enter the menu by pressing both of those foot switches, navigate to system, reset, factory, are you sure? Yes. And this will perform a factory reset on your device. Unfortunately, this does mean that any configuration or messages that you've uh, added to your device will be erased and it will be restored back to the default factory settings. Uh, this 
is, is a bit sucky. Uh, in future versions, you won't have to do this. The app will allow you to back up all of that configuration, but for now, um, that's what is required. Now, you can verify that the firmware update has worked correctly by going to the menu, system, and first up, you should see firmware version or FW. And it should say V1.0.1.1. You can ignore the last number. All we're focused on is the V1.0.1. That means your device has successfully been updated to the latest firmware version. So there's a number of bug fixes that have been applied to this. With the lead up to Christmas, we didn't have much time to address all of them, but we were able to tackle a large majority that were affecting uh, most of the common use cases. So I hope you enjoy. And if you have any questions, just get in touch.